All right, guys, this is Matt Dean. I want to welcome you to the week six AP Physics One content review. Please make sure your mics are off and your webcams are off. Feel free to unmute if you have any questions to ask. Uh, we are recording this session, and the recorded session will be posted to our YouTube channel, which is the A Plus College Ready Science YouTube channel. Hope you can join us next week for the week seven content review. It's going to be held on October 9th, that's a Friday at 10 a.m. Today we're going to be talking about forces. We're going to be focusing mostly on free body diagrams and on frictional forces. We'll start off with a little bit about free body diagrams. So here's the first question. So we have a box on a flat table. So just think of it something like so. It's being pulled to the right by some applied force. So let's think maybe we've got a rope attached to it, pulling it that way. Draw a free body diagram that depicts all the forces which act on the table assume that no friction acts between the box and the table. So remember that when we're drawing a free body diagram, we remove it from its environment. I'm just gonna draw it as a box. So let's think about the forces that act on it. First of all, we have a gravitational force acting downward. I'm gonna label that as F sub G for force of gravity. Also the table is supporting the box. So it's supporting it with a normal force, which on flat ground, is typically going to be equal but opposite to the weight, the force of gravity. So let's draw another force going up here. And let's draw the, the length of this arrow to be the same as the arrow for the force of gravity, indicating they have extra or um, identical strengths, identical magnitudes. All right, the only other force that I have is the applied force, the force on the rope. So that's acting to the right. So this free body diagram shows me that this force and this force cancel out, which means that this applied force is my net force. Since there is a net force, I will get acceleration. Question two, uh, this time it looks like the same question, except this time I have kinetic friction, but the box accelerates to the right. So again, I have a weight acting down. I have a normal force of equal magnitude acting up. This time I have an applied force to the right. I have a frictional force that always acts opposite of motion. We know this thing is moving to the right. My frictional force acts to the left. My frictional force though, it has to be less than my applied force because I know that I'm accelerating to the right which means there's a net force to the right. That means that this arrow should be a little bit shorter than this arrow right here. So this diagram is still showing me that this force and this force cancel. This force cancels out some of this force, but not all of it, which means there's still a net force acting to the right, which means that there's acceleration to the right. All right, next question. So this time we've got a box on an inclined plane. As the box slides, its velocity increases. A small amount of kinetic friction acts between the surface of the box and the inclined plane. Draw a free body diagram, which depicts all the forces which act on the box. So first of all, let's think about the box. So what we have acting on that box is obviously we have the weight acting down. We have a normal force that acts on that box as well. And that normal force always acts uh, perpendicular to the surface. So this is FG. This is the normal force acting perpendicular to the surface. And then we also have a, um, a frictional force which acts opposite of motion. So that frictional force would act up the plane, maybe something like that. 
Now, if this was a free body diagram, I would not want to show the incline. So I would just show that part of the diagram. Remember that when you're drawing free body diagrams, you don't draw components. To work a problem involving this kind of thing, we would break this gravitational force into a component perpendicular uh, to the plane and another component parallel. But when you're drawing uh, free body diagrams, you do not show the components of the forces. You only show the actual forces. All right, so let's work some problems involving friction now. So this says a 96 Newton box slides across a table. When a 65 Newton force is applied horizontally into the right on the box, the box moves to the right at a constant velocity. How much kinetic friction acts on the box? So let's think for free body diagram first. So there's our weight. There's our normal force. Those cancel out. We've got an applied force um, to the right. That's that 65 Newtons of applied force. Um, key word in this, in this problem, the most important word to understand is that word right there, or that phrase. Box moves to the right at a constant velocity. A constant velocity means A equals zero, acceleration equals zero, which means F net equals zero. Well, we know that this normal force and this gravitational force cancel each other out. That means that there has to be a force acting this way to the left that cancels out the supplied force of 65. So that tells us that the frictional force has to be 65 newtons to the left or negative 65 newtons. So that's our answer on problem four. Problem five, same problem, but this time we want to know the value of the coefficient of friction. Remember that this is our equation for the frictional force. I like to call this the fun equation. And that's frictional force equals the coefficient of friction times the normal force. Well, in this case, we're looking for the coefficient of friction. So I'm going to divide both sides by the normal force, solve this out for mu. So mu is equal to the frictional force divided by the normal force. In the previous problem, we found that the frictional force was 65 newtons. And the normal force here we found was equal but opposite to the weight. The weight of our box is 96 newtons, which means the normal force is 96 newtons. Notice that the newtons cancel out and that our uh, coefficient of friction is going to be the 65 newtons divided by the 96 newtons. And that gives us 0.677 as our coefficient of friction, 0.677. Now problem six, same problem, except this time our box is accelerating to the right. So think about a free body diagram again, always helpful to start there. So we have a gravitational force acting down. We know that's 96 Newtons. We have a normal force acting up. We know that's 96 Newtons up. We have an applied force acting this way to the right, 65 Newtons. And we have some frictional force acting this way. We're not sure what that is just yet, but we know it's smaller than 65. Easiest way to work this problem would be that the net force, remember the net force can also be notated as the sum of all the forces acting on the object. Uh, let's just think horizontally for right now because we know the vertical forces cancel out. So we know we have plus 65 plus we've got to have some frictional force acting on this object. Um, in this case, we know that our net force is going to be M times A. We know that the weight is equal to Mg. So let's solve that out for the mass. So the mass is equal to the weight divided by acceleration due to gravity. So let's take the 96 Newtons divided by 10 meters per second square. So that's going to give us 9.6 kilograms um, as our mass. And we know that our net force 
is equal to our mass, in this case, 9.6 kilograms, times our acceleration, three meters per second square. So let's go 9.6 times three to get 28.8 Newtons of uh, net force. All right, so now let's go back up here and do a little work on this equation. So again, we know that the summation of our forces, our net force, in this case is equal to our applied force plus our frictional force. So our applied force is plus 65 Newtons plus some frictional force equals our net force, which we just figured out is 28.8 Newtons. So let's solve that for FF by, the, by subtracting 65 from both sides. So 28.8 minus 65 gives us a frictional force of 36.2 newtons negative 36.2 which means 36.2 newtons now notice the closest answer i have here is 35.6 and that's because when i wrote this problem for g i used 9.8 instead of 10 meters per second if you use 10 meters per second you're going to end up with an answer of negative 36.2 or 36.2 newtons to the left. All right, problem seven. You apply a force of F at an angle of 60 degrees above the horizontal and to the left on a box of mass M. No friction acts on the system. What is the value of the horizontal acceleration of the box? So let's draw out a diagram. So essentially, let's think of it as maybe having a rope attached to our box. This is just a horizontal. The angle between the rope and the horizontal, 60 degrees. We're applying a force upward at um, a force of F, at a magnitude of F. Let's assume this box has a mass of M. The force that's cut, if there's no friction, the force that's causing the horizontal acceleration is going to be the horizontal component of this force. So let's draw down a vertical right here and let's find, I'm going to call this F sub H, the horizontal component of F. And in this case, to find F sub H, I'm going to use the cosine function. And I'm going to say the cosine of 60 equals my adjacent side, F sub H over my hypotenuse F, which means F sub H equals F times cosine 60. And remember, since there's no friction acting back over here to the right, F sub H is my net horizontal force. So my acceleration is gonna be equal to F net over M, which in this case is F cosine 60 over the mass. So that gives me an answer of F cosine 60 over the mass. Um, since we're moving to the left, we're gonna put that negative sign in there to indicate to the left. So our answer should be A. All right, problem eight. So I have a two kilogram block and a three kilogram block. They're attached together by a rope right here in the middle. Um, they're on a table no friction between the blocks and the table. We're applying a force this way um, to the three kilogram block. And we wanna know what's the tension in the string between those two masses. So we wanna know what's the tension in here. All right, first of all, let's, to, to figure this out, we need to calculate um, the acceleration of the system. So the acceleration of the system both blocks together is going to be equal to the net force acting on those blocks which in this case since there's no friction that's going to be this force of f divided by the total mass of the system which is the two plus the three so the five kilograms that's the acceleration of the whole system <clears throat> that's also the acceleration of each block because they're going to accelerate together this tension is applying the net force on block 
two. So now let's just think about block two. So the tension is the net force on two, and that's equal to the mass of two times the acceleration of two. So in this case, the tension is gonna be the mass of two, which is two kilograms, times the acceleration of two, which is F over five kilograms. Notice the kilograms cancel out. So the tension is equal to two times F over five, which is answer C. You're gonna see lots of questions like this one on the um, AP exam, where they may not give you numerical values for all the quantities and you have to do algebra, solve for a relationship like so. All right, so now let's look at problem nine. So we have a 450 Newton box sliding down a 45 degree incline plane with a uniform acceleration of one meter per second square. What net force acts down the plane? So let's draw this out. So here's our box. It's moving down the plane. This plane has an incline of 45 degrees. Um, it's accelerating at one meter per second square. Really, all we need to think about the net force down the plane is just Newton's second law. So we need to find the mass of the box. So let's divide its weight 450 by 10 to get a mass of 45 kilograms. And let's multiply that by the acceleration, one meter per second square. So we end up with a net force of 45 Newtons down the box. Looking at answer B. Now we're gonna get a little bit more complicated on this next, uh, next slide. This time, what friction force acts on the box? So now we're gonna have to draw this thing out. Boy, that's a terrible drawing. Let's try that again. So this is 45. So I'm gonna draw in my weight straight down. And to work this problem, I'm gonna divide that weight into one component that is perpendicular to the plane and one that's parallel to the plane. When I draw my diagram like this and break it into components, if this angle is 45, that angle right there is also 45. This is my weight right here, which is 450 Newtons. And I want to find F perpendicular and F parallel. So to find that parallel component, I'm going to use the sine function. And I'm going to say sine of 45 equals opposite F parallel over the weight. So I'm going to go the sine of 45 times 450. And I want to end up with F parallel equals 318.20. And that's pushing the box down the plane. My perpendicular component, I'll use cosine. Cosine 45 equals F perpendicular adjacent over hypotenuse, whoops. Over hypotenuse 450. Um, in this case, we know that the sine and cosine of a 45 degree angle are the same. So once again, I'm gonna get 318.20. Now, here's what I know. I know that I, the sum of all my forces acting just horizontally, right now I'm just thinking horizontally, is the net force, which is gonna be equal to the um, parallel component plus the friction. So my net force is 45 Newtons. And that's equal to my parallel component, 318.20 plus friction. So let's solve that out for friction by subtracting 318.20 from both sides. And that up, it ends up with an answer of about negative 273 Newtons or 273 Newtons in the opposite direction of the motion, which would be up the plane, right there.
Now, 11, we want to know what normal force acts. When you have a problem like this, the normal force, remember, is the support force. So the box is pushing down with this perpendicular component of the weight against the plane, which means the box pushes back with an equal but opposite force. So when you have an inclined plane problem like this, your normal force is typically going to be equal but opposite to the perpendicular component of your weight, which in this case is about 318.20 newtons. We're looking at answer A. All right, the last part of this problem, what is the value of the coefficient of friction between the box and the surface of the plane? So we've got to go back to our fun equation here. We're looking for the coefficient of friction. So let's solve for coefficient of friction by dividing both sides by the normal force. We calculated in problem 10 that our frictional force was 273 newtons. And we calculated that our normal force was 318 newtons. Divide that out and we end up with a coefficient of friction of about 0.858. All right, I tell you what, I wanna, I'm gonna skip over 14 and 15 right now. And I wanna to end today by looking at this problem, the short free response problem. So we have three identical boxes. Each of them have a mass of 0.6. They're on a frictionless horizontal surface. What normal force acts on box B? Well, remember that the normal force is gonna be equal and opposite to the weight. So for box B, its weight is equal to mg. So its weight is gonna be equal to 0.6 times 10. So it's gonna be equal to, its, its weight is six Newtons, which means the normal force is gonna be six Newtons. And I would say six Newtons and it's up. Always wanna give a direction. And now part B, if an applied force of 80 Newtons is applied to, to the right on rope F, what is the acceleration of box A? Well, remember this 80 Newtons is applied, really it's the net force acting on the whole system. So we need to calculate the system acceleration using Newton's second law. So the net force acting on the system, since there's no friction, is the 80 Newtons of applied force. And that acts on the whole system. So we need to divide that by the system mass, which would be 0.6 times 3, or 1.8 kilograms. So let's divide 80 by 1.8. And we end up with a system acceleration of 44.4 meters per second square. And that's to the right. And that's the acceleration, not just of box A, but from, for all of those boxes. All right, so now we wanna know what is the tension in the rope between boxes B and C. So what's the tension here? Well, that tension, if you look at the picture, is having to provide the net force that acts on box A and B. So we know that Newton's second law in this case, that's the tension. That tension is acting on not just box B's mass, but also on box A's mass. So the tension is essentially gonna be equal to the mass of box A plus box B, 1.2, times the acceleration, which is the same for both boxes. So let's multiply that out, 44.4 times 1.2. We end up with about 53.3 Newtons of tension in that box and that's acting to the right. Now we wanna know is the tension in, rope, in the rope between boxes A and B higher or lower than between B and C? Well, the tension here between B and C is applying the net force that acts on both box A and B. The tension here is applying the net force that acts just on box A, which means the tension between A and B 
is less than the tension between B and C. Finally, we want to draw free body diagrams for each box. So for A, we've got a force of gravity acting down. We have a normal force equal but opposite acting up. And we have this tension force acting to the right. All right, for box B, we have force of gravity down. We have normal force up. We have tension going this way. But we also have the force over here, the force of A owned B. The same would happen for C. So for C, weight down, normal force up, applied force going to the right. And then finally, over here, we have the force of B on C. All right, those are our free body diagrams. Uh, today was a shorter session than, than normal, but we're gonna stop there. We'll finish up forces and dynamics next week. We'll do that again on Friday at 10 a.m. Hope to see you there.